Hi everybody, Scott Weaver from Factory Drift Window Treatment. Uh, today we're going to build a cornice. I'm going to show you uh, what we need to build the cornice and upholster the cornice. A uh, few items you're going to need. Of course you're going to need some fabric. Um, and this is an option. This is what's called a uh, welting cord. Um, I like to use, it's like a, around a 3 8 inch. You can probably pick this up at a Joe William Fabrics. And um, you can sew this right to your fabric. And it goes on like this. And you can use a actual foot. They actually do make a foot. Looks like uh, this here. And pretty much when you put this on your machine, the little pressure foot, and it comes on and you sew it. Or you can use a zipper foot if you don't have one of these. So this here, I think this is, a, well, I'm forgetting, I think it's 12 30 seconds or around 3 8 uh, welting cord. And again, Joanne Fabrics probably would have it in stock. So here's your welting cord that I've already made up right here. I've got my fabric on it. And I've got my uh, fabric that I'm going to be upholstering with. I've got my drapery lining. All the tools you're going to need. This is half inch cardboard, tacking board. Uh, you, that's also an option. You don't have to use it, but I like using it. You're going to need a pencil. You're either going to need a stapler puller or a small screwdriver for staples that you may have to take out and a needle nose pair of pliers a pair of scissors um, you can either either or use drywall screws and a Phillips head electric screw gun of course the tape measure is nice and this here is an actual staple gun. It shoots an inch and five eighths staple, which is what I'm going to be using today. But if you don't have an air staple gun, a screw gun with sheetrock screws will also work. And a stapler, either an electric one or a handheld or an air staple gun. Um, Quarter inch or three eighths inch staples is what I use. I don't um, because I'm using um, oriental, oriental strand board. I uh, keep it so it doesn't protrude all the way through. So anything over uh, three eighths of an inch staple, it'll probably just go right through the board. And of course, these are for my air staple gun, um, the inch and five eighths staples. You're also going to want to have on hand a um, glue gun. I'm going to talk about the pieces. Oh, and this is the uh, this is a one inch Dacron um, padding. You can also find that at uh, like a Joann's or your favorite uh, fabric store. Um, it's poly bonded Dacron. It's called, and I use the one inch version of it. They make a half inch also. Now the pieces of your cornice, um, you are going to have. Of course, you're going to have the face of the board, and I'm I'm using. Um, 7 16 oriental strand board osd board for short is what i'm using on mine um, and then i have what's called the dust board which is the piece that goes on the top of it and then i have the side boards which are called returns and um, if you're not using an air staple gun it is very difficult when i put this together to use standard screws going through these since, since the walls of these are so small. So you can replace the dust board and the two returns with just standard pine because you've got three quarters of an inch. So um, it, it makes it a little easier when you're, you're putting this on and you can screw right into the pine. So remember that you don't have to use the OSB board. You can use pine. So with that said, we're going to move everything to the side and then we're going to start making our cornice. I like to start with putting the returns onto the dust board first. So what you're going to do first, put this upright, put your return, butt it right up against there. Do the 
steam in the seat. See, this is relatively an easy project. There we have it. This part's done. Now with the cordis all built, I took a little piece of sandpaper and I lightly sanded around the edges to make sure it has a nice clean finish on here. So the next step is to put the poly bonded Dacron on. Now there's two methods you can use. You either can use a spray glue, like the 3M Super 77 glue, or you can just staple it on. If you have an air stapler, it's a little easier to do it that way, um, but if you're using a standard stapler, the hand stapler, you're probably better off gluing it on. Um, so with that said, you want your batting to go around your sides, and, I, and you also notice I've cut, I overcut the size of my batting. I didn't just cut it exactly the size. So I like to trim it off, give it a clean finish. So now you're going to go ahead and staple it on or glue it, whichever way you like. Okay, so now I've got the padding on my cornice and it's oversized and uh, like I mentioned before the reason why you want to oversize is you actually want to stretch this on a little bit you don't want it loose and uh, that's this that's one of the reasons why I overcut it I make the uh, the Dacron a little bit larger than I want so I can stretch it on and then trim it off after you also notice that I have a seam right here um, because the Dacron wasn't wide enough, so I added another piece and I just put a couple of staples in there. It won't show by the time I upholster it. So at this point, I'm going to trim off all the excess. And pretty much so, you can take your scissors and put it right. This does take a little practice. But you're basically going to use um, the, the piece of wood here, the return or the, the, uh, the dust part, dust board as your uh, cutting surface. So I'm just using that and trimming it off so you get it nice and clean. I'm going to do that going across the top and the bottom. Do it this way so you can kind of see. or staple it, get the same outcome with the deck run.
basically you're just using the box itself as a, a straight edge. And you're just putting your bottom of your scissors to the edge of the wood here and using that as a guide. It's just the way I prefer doing it. You can find your own methods. Now we're ready to put the fabric on. What I like to do is find the center of my cornice on the top. So I take my tape measure, put it across. In this case, it's 62 inches across. So I'm going to put a center line at 31 inches. And then with my fabric, my fabric that I'm using is what's called railroaded. That means I'm not going to have any seams. Um, if you were to seam this, if, it, if you were using a print, and you were seam, seaming this because it's over the, the uh, width of your material, you would have a seam on the left and a seam on your right. Um, but in this case, I don't have any seams. But I still want to center, uh, center my uh, fabric evenly on the cornice because if I did have seams, you would want, if it's 12 inches on this side, a fabric seam and 12 inches, you want it equal. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little notch right here. And that tells me that's the center of my fabric. And then I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to put the face side of it down on the table. So I'm looking at the back side or the wrong side of the fabric. Like this. And I'm going to line up the center mark of my cornice that was here with the notch. And the other um, consideration you're, you're going to have is to make sure that when you're looking at your fabric here, that you have about the same amount. So in other words, on the top of here, I've got two and a half inches of extra material on this. And then you want to come across over here and make sure you have roughly the same amount here. And a lot of times you can even see the pattern. Like if you have a certain pattern, you can actually see it and you can eyeball it. Now, next thing I do is I start upholstering my sides first. And I wanna squish that padding down, that Dacron padding, I wanna push it. I'm actually pulling this fabric, I'm also taking my hand, and I'm making sure that that padding is compressed. I'm gonna put a staple, couple of staples. I'm gonna run my hand down, keeping my fabric compressed, using both hands, Get it where I want it. Now, in this fabric, it actually has these dots on here, so I can I can line up these little dots to make sure I'm staying straight, straight across. Okay. You also want to work left to right. Whatever you do, you go to one side, you work on the left side, then you go over to the right side, and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm back over here. I'm just going to gently give my fabric a little pull to get it taut. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to use my hand, compress the, the, the uh, batting, and I'm going to work it all the way down. Keep close attention if you've got a pattern, a stripe, or whatever it is, just keeping it even. Or even just following the grain of the fabric. But somehow you want a guideline as you're putting your fabric onto your, your cornice board. Okay. The next step is to upholster the top. And again, this has these little lines in here. You see these little dots. So with these dots, I want to follow a line of dots all the way across to keep everything even. So what I'm going to do is again, I like to work left to right. So, but 
what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a couple staples here. Then I'm going to follow that same lot of dots coming across. And then I'm going to come over to my right hand side and I'm going to put a few staples. Now the reason why I just did that, work this side and that side, is because if you were only to start stapling on this one end, this fabric can start moving over. And before you know it, the fabric's going to be crooked. So by putting a few staples down here on my left hand side, coming to my right side, stapling that down, then I know that my fabric's in place. And especially if you had seams in here, you want to make sure your seams are staying straight. So if I had a couple of seams, I would, I, you definitely want to put a few staples here and a few staples here so the seams don't travel on you. Um, and now, all I'm going to do now is staple all the way down to the uh, other end, and then I'll be right back. So now I'm just about finished stapling across the top, and something I want to point out to you when you're doing this, just like when you did the sides, you want to make sure that you're compressing down onto the foam with one hand and lightly pulling it with the other, getting it in place, and then putting it in place. So you, you definitely want to do that. Hold it down, press that foam right down, the dac Dacron down. And then we're going to come across the top of it. We're going to create a little angle, right angle here. Come to this side, do the same thing here, creating a right angle. Alright, so that's what that looks like here. We've got it angled right here. Now we're going to flip this over. Matter of fact, I'm going to come over here so you can see what I'm doing a little bit. Time to start on the bottom. This may look a little scary for you because you've got to cut your fabric up close. Now, here's your bottom. Now, the first cut you're going to make on it, I'm sure you can see it, is right in here. And you see where the inside of that return is right there. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put my scissors so it's actually touching the inside, like that. Then I'm going to cut, just like that. And you see where I'm at, I'm very close right here. That's my first staple. Then you can take your hand and swipe it across the fabric. And again, I've got these little dots, so I'm going to follow that a little bit. Get this little reach over here. Yes, it will. And then, I'm going to get it right to the edge of the table. Put a few staples on it. Then I'm going to go to my other end. Remember, you're always working left to right. same thing on this side but you also want to make sure that you're following wherever your dots were or whatever type of your pattern is even if it has some type of a green you want to follow it so you're using the same same spot and my hands traveling across the cornice to keep it and my other hand here is pulling it not don't like pull it and stretch it to death but you just want to you want to calm that padding down. You want to squish it, swiping your hand across. Again, with your scissors, you want to take it to the inside of that cornice and cut it. And you're going to cut it so that part of the is even with this right here, with the edge of your cornice right right here. Okay, with that like that, you're going to go ahead, swipe it. If I can make this reach, 
Okay. Now all we're going to do with it is keep traveling over, swiping, holding in place, and stapling. And you continue that all the way across, then we'll be right back. So now I've got this all stapled along the bottom of my cornice, just like that. Now, as you remember here, we made that little cut. That was the very first cut on the bottom. And this is going to be perfect for us because now we're going to flip our cornice this way. And with our stapler, we are going to bring the fabric over, almost like on a 45. And again, using your hand and working it. I'll show you what this looks like in a minute. Again, we're going to pull the fabric. And that's what that looks like right there. It's like a little 45 going to the inside of the cornice. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're always working left to right. Here we are here, or right to left, but we always have to work even. You do one thing on one side, you go to the other side, and you do the same thing. And again, you can almost see how it's already had this little angle like that. So then you're just going to bring it in. Like that. Again, it's like this. We've got a cut like that. We're going to bend this part in and bring it down. Pull in your fabric. Stapling along the inside of the corners. Okay. And nice little clean 45. So now we have it stapled all the way around, but now we have to work on the inside of the corner. I'm going to bring this around. Starting on this side first. As you notice, it's not just going to sit down in there. So we have to put a little cut to make it sit in there. I'm going to take my scissors, bring it over here so you can see this a little better maybe. And I'm going to cut on an angle. I'm actually going to cut an angle into this corner. Just how my scissor is, that's the type of angle you should be putting. So I'm coming in like this. Like that. I stop it right at the edge of this corner. I'm going to cut some of this away because I don't need it all. I'm going to bend this in. I'm also going to take this end bend this in. Okay, you see the inside of that? Looks just like that. So again, I cut into that. It's like this. I'm folding over the excess. And then I'm folding this in. And that's what that's going to look like. I'm going to take my staple gun. I'm only stapling a little bit more than halfway down. I'm not stapling this part closed yet. And I've just got to trim off some of this excess because we don't need it all. Alright, so that's that so far. Now you see this little guy hanging right here? Watch what happens here. Hold it into the cornice, put a couple staples. Like that. Now since we did this side, we're going to go, we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Across. 
Here it is. Now this is going to have the same type of angle going into it. I'm going to cut it right to that corner, like that. Pull this up a little bit so you can see. This is here right now, like that. Take my scissor and I'm going to cut it into the corner on an angle. trim off a little bit of the excess that we don't need, like that, bend it in, and the same with this, we're going to bend this in, let's see if you can see that, take your finger for your thumb or your finger, and bend it into the corner. Fabric taut. Get your staple gun. A little over halfway is about enough. And again, you've got this piece here. You're going to fold it in so it's like on a 45, like that. Show it this way again. See how that's almost there anyway. Just going to take it, fold it in. And you're going to staple it. And again, cutting off what you don't need. Okay, so we have that part down. Now it's time to add our welting. And I'm going to start right with the bottom. And I like to have, there's two ways you can put welting onto a cornice. The first way, let me turn this around, is more of a professional way. However, it takes a lot longer. You notice when you did your piping, it's in two layers because you had it folded over. So you have a layer, the inside layer, like that. And that becomes helpful because when you're putting this on, let me just show you as an example, you'd be putting it on this way, you'd be stapling it here, and then once you staple it in place a little bit, you would take this cardboard, and you'd place the cardboard in here, like so, staple it in and then the second layer hides it you bring this around like that and you staple it here so that's one method of, of putting this on but we're not going to use that method we're going to cheat and hot glue it on you can get away with it with many of the corners There's some like silks and stuff like that I probably would recommend using the cardboard method but this is a nice upholstery weight fabric it's a fabric that would adhere very well to hot glue so we're going to glue it on. Start on this end. Now I don't put the glue on the cornice itself. I put the glue on the welting. Having it flat, and I always try to keep it close to the stitching here when I put my glue on. You want to work small amounts at a time. Glue. Don't bring it all the way over to the edge when you first start. We're going to put it on. When you come to this corner, you simply pick it up. And create a 45 right in here. So that's that part of it. Then you're going to continue working it. Of 
just like that. until you get to the other end. And I'll be right back. So now I've got the weld thing all the way on here, glued all the way around the corner. You see I still have these to deal with. So now I'm going to take the corner and so I'm going to flip it over so I can see the back side of it. And we'll show you how to finish this off. Starting with this corner, I'm going to take my layers, so this is exposed right here, because I want to get rid of all the bulk, or as much of the bulk as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this right off, trim it right off. Just that, just so it doesn't have so much bulk in here. Now, this cut right here, I'm going to put my scissors right up against the edge of this inside of the return. Now bring this fabric straight down, and I'm putting my point of my scissors right to the right to the back, right right here. And I'm going to cut that fabric all the way. So it's a stop about the thickness of this board. Okay, so there's my cut. Then I'm going to go ahead and staple. I'm going to come in here. And I'm stapling right to the edge, right to the bottom edge over here. Then on this, I'm going to create a, a 45. Okay, do that again. It's already practically a 45. Now, I'm just going to create a 45 degree angle right into that corner to give it a nice clean finish. And I'm going to staple it right in here. Okay, now. The next cut you need to make is in here. And again, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut right along the sewing line of where the welting is. And I'm going to cut it back all the way to this edge. Matter of fact, when I do it, I'm going to cut and when my point of my scissor hits this, I know where to stop. So I have it in here. Okay. Just like that, I cut it off. Then this piece right here that's flapping, flapping in the wind, I'm going to cut it so there's only about a half inch exposed. Just took that off. Okay, so there's about a half inch, three quarters of an inch, anything like that. So I'm going to take this welting, because I cut it right where the stitching is. Peeling it back. And be careful you don't cut the actual material. You just want to cut that white welting off without cutting the material. A little bit more. Okay, now this piece right here is going to get folded under. Do you see that piece right there? That's where it's going to give it a clean finish. Then we're going to put a staple right here. Okay, so I folded this under. And I'm going to take this to the inside of the return. And I'm going to fold it, crease it like that. See, we've got it like this. Bring your fabrics in here. 
bring it in, take my stapler, and of course I ran out of staples. Always happens. Always happens where you don't want to stay, your stapler to be empty. And that was one of them. So there we go. Now I can finish this part off. Now what happens with this little piece right here? This little piece you're going to fold in so there's no raw edges. Like so. And you're going to put a staple right here. And then you're going to cut that excess off. Like so. Now it's perfectly legal to have a raw edge here because this is going to go back to the wall so you'll never see it. But now you've got this right here where we've done there and, and the best way is take your glue gun, open this up, put a little hot glue right in there, press it, so, and then this piece that you have here, creating like a 45 degree angle in here. And go ahead and staple this down. Okay, and then you've got a clean finish on this end, getting rid of any loose threads that you might have. There you have it. Your first return is done. Now we're going to move over to the, the opposite end. And we're going to do the same thing over here. There we go. Again, I'm going to peel back that first layer. Get rid of the bulk in here so we don't have all this bulk. that back, make sure that's back. Again, taking my scissors, putting it to the inside of the cornice return with my tips of my, my scissors hitting the back and keeping this nice and even and trim it just like that. Take your stapler few staples in there. And then this piece is already kind of on a 45. You can probably tell. Let me get it so you can see it from this angle here a little bit more. That's a better angle. And then from here, you're going to bend it down. So it looks like that. So that finishes that part off very nicely. At this point, if you want to, you can go ahead and staple the rest of this down. Keep the staples to the bottom edge. I'll put them up here because we're going to have some our lining, we're going to add our lining so we don't, we want those staples to be covered. Now we're back on this edge again, we're going to do the exact same thing we did over here. The tip of your scissors goes against the return, the edge of this return, when you cut off. And you're cutting off right at the stitch line where you sewed the welt in. Like so. Peel back the fabric on the welting. Sometimes you don't get it quite right. You got a little snip. Put the welting off right back to the back of this return. 
careful not to cut the actual fabric though. Then again, on this piece, you want to trim this down like that, a little piece so you don't have so much. Peel back your welting that you glued. Bend this in so there's no raw edges. So again, that's sort of like that. Bend it in, keeping it even with the back of your cornice, your return. And you can glue it, but it'll pretty much just stay just the way it is. Just like that. And you've got the inside of your return, the fabric. You want to fold that in so you have a nice clean finish. Okay, just like that. Fold it in. Staple in here, staples, holding it. Take this piece, fold it. You're folding the raw edges inside, right to the back of that cornice. Put a staple, cut the excess off. And you're going to go ahead, open this up a little bit right in there, take a little hot glue, and then we're going to cause a little 45 in here, like that, and go ahead. Staple that down. Okay, so now you've got the inside of the corner stuff finished off. You got your welting. So far, this is what your cornice is looking like. The welting across. Now we have to do the top. Start on this end. The top is actually a little easier than doing the bottom. There's your welting. And just remember, I always like putting the glue on the welting itself, not on the cornice. Always putting it right where the stitch mark is, right here. So when you're putting it on, put it right along the stitch line. Just one small bead should do it. Like that. Take it carefully, bring it over. You want to make sure you're leaving about an inch or so off the side over here. Carefully bring a 45. See how to take my fingers? I'm bringing it around. So it's a 90 degree angle, but 45, 45. Just like that. And you've got that in the corner. Go ahead and glue this whole thing down. What I do is I peel it back like this to the top, stick my glue in, I'm going to do it in like a 12 to 14 inch stretch to make sure it doesn't set up uh, too well so you don't want to do the whole shot of it. You just want to do it in steps. Press the glue right in.
back over to the corner. Take your hand, bring up the fabric. So you're creating this 90 degree angle. Stick glue right to the edge of the cornice. Leave yourself at least a good inch or so, inch and a half, two inches, whatever you want on that end. And cut it off flush. Now we're going to turn this around. We'll start back on this corner. I'm not going to cut away the extra material on the top. You don't really see the top. It's usually up high enough that you don't have to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a 45 degree angle again. Like that. That's what it looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and staple it. Basically, we're going to work this to, close to the same as the bottom, uh, where you're taking the tip of your, your scissors, you're putting it right to the edge here. That's your stop guide. And again, you're cutting off right where you, you stitched, like that. So that's what you have. Just cut right back to here. And go ahead and peel back this fabric. Peeling it right back to the edge, to this edge. Careful to cut the fat, cut the welting cord itself, but not the fabric off. Get this piece out of your way. Take that little flap right there, one hanging. Bend it in. Bring it across, and you're going to staple it. You're stapling it right on the edge of this, right along here. So I stapled it right here. Then you're going to take this piece, this little flap one, bend this in like that. Bring it to the inside of your cornice for a clean finish. I'll show you that again. It looks like that. Bend it in. Put it underneath the cornice like that. Put a stapler to to hold it. And that's what gives you the clean finish there. Next, you're going to go ahead and staple this down. A couple of pieces up. Hold it. Now we're back to this edge. And again, Create a 45 in the fabric. The reason why you're creating this 45 like that, so it goes towards the back and it doesn't come out here where you might be able to see it, but also when we add our lining, we want to make sure we're covering these raw edges. Now we're going to do the same thing here. We cut right at the stitch line. Going to remove the material. Or remove the piping, I should say. Again, being careful not to cut the material. You want to keep the material from being cut. Just the piping. Like that. It'll be the same type of folding in. Fold it in, bring it along this edge, or right along this edge, and staple. Good 
Then again, you're going to fold this in, staple to the back side. Okay, with that being done, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to line it. Put our liner. With a complete cornice. That's what it looks like from the front side of it. Your top view. Your bottom looks like that. See, it's clean, clean finish all the way. Now we're going to go ahead and add our lining. I've already got my lining cut. Now what I'm doing here, when I'm putting this lining down, you have to bear with me for a little bit, but I'm going to completely come up to the top of this row, because for one thing, it's pretty even. But also, I want to make sure that you can't see through it. So I'm going to bring this all the way, and you'll also notice, I'm going to bring it over here, so you can see it. I have extra on this side. And you can see how I bent this in, like that. This little flap right here, I always cut extra. So I have that flap. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. And I'm going to staple it. I'm going to staple it all the way across. Keeping it even. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side as I did on the other. You can see I'm bending this in like that. And I'm placing a couple staples. Okay, now, now I'm going to add my one half inch cardboard. And I'm going to go about a half inch from the bottom. So I can feel my bottom. There's the bottom of it right here. So I'm going to go up about a half inch. And I'm going to staple this on. You follow me so far? There's the bottom edge. Well stapled down.
next part. So now I've got it all stapled on, I've got my cardboard on. Now the next part of this is to take the lining and flip it. And you see what's happening? This is creating a clean finish at the bottom. Then you're going to go ahead and staple it. Alright, and just like that, follow all the way along the, uh, the bottom. And then we're going to go ahead and do the top part as well. So now I've got the inside of the cornice completely lined um, and you can see we got a nice clean finish at the bottom here. Um, there are staples across here and here and you can go ahead if you want glue a little gimp, hot glue some gimp to uh, cover those staples if that bothers you from the inside. Usually though when it's hanging on a wall you'll never see that normally but um, a real good job would be to actually take some gimp and put it across to your hot glue it. Now the next part of it is only the top of the dust board, stapling that down. And I've trimmed the way to about a half inch. And all we're going to do here is take it, bend it, so we have a clean finish at the top. giving a little bit of a tautness to it. And that's how you want to finish off the top of it, like that. Just keep bending in the fabric so you don't have any raw edges. And I'll be right back. So here's your cornice all completed, looks beautiful. Um, at this point you would take a couple of angle irons like this, place them on your wall so far apart, screw them onto your wall and then rest your cornice on top of it and then screw it in from underneath. So that's how you would mount it. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, hope this helped you on your own project. The beauty, beautiful thing about doing a cornice is it takes very little fabric, uh, take a little time but um, they are beautiful and having something padded like this, especially if you're going over like a sliding glass door, um, you're insured it's not going to move because a lot of times you put a regular balance up there, somebody opens up the sliding glass door and, and it messes it all up and whatever. So um, good luck with this. Like us on Facebook. It's factorydrickwindowtreatments.com is our website also. And uh, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Thank you.